Hello and welcome to another League of Legends video and in this one we shall be taking a look at the reasons you seem to throw leads, perhaps even you throw a comeback, and essentially why you lose winnable games. This is a very complex topic and any one member of a team can be the cause of your downfall. How many times have you seen a gold graph that looks just like this, only to have it look like this five minutes later? To tackle this example, I have two games with a variety of champions in all roles to bring forward some things you should keep in mind while trying to lead, emphasis on that word, your team to a victory to avoid losing these winnable games. We can also use this principle to look at those reverse throws after you actually do make a play in order to make that initial comeback. As always, every like is appreciated on topics you enjoy as it lets me know what you want to see more of. So in our first game, we can look at a lead that was built up with other map domination, but the enemy team had a Karthus Zerith jungle mid duo who were both Grandmaster Smurfs, which given that this was a mid diamond game is only justified by their obscenely high win rates and the fact that they really did hard carry the game for the red team. Whether they win or not remains to be seen. So let's give a quick summary of events that led to such a powerful early lead, and sometimes that's important just understanding how these lane kingdoms you might actually have on your team can translate to a global map advantage. So early on we have our Nunu attempting gank in the mid lane, lucky to get out of the Xerath Karthus duo, and I don't really need to say it, but the Xerath will eat the Syndra alive. But as that gank goes on, the Caitlyn and Morgana grab first blood on the bottom side, the Orn autofill top is able to smash a solo kill in a deceptive trade on the top main Aurelia, and then subsequently Nunu makes up for his clumsy gank early on and chases down a Karthus after Syndra sleepwalks into his raptor area, who knows why she was there in the first place, and then he's also able to pick up a kill on the bird who had absentmindedly roamed into a bush while being seen. All these plays give global advantages and lay the foundation for the Caitlyn Morgana bottom lane to start hammering away at those tower plates, and anyone who plays bottom lane knows that a well played Caitlyn and Morgana can be some of the most obnoxious stuff to play against. The Orn also semi-freezes on the top side, that means him and Nunu can easily collapse onto a Karthus, whose arrogant power thing is punished righteously, and despite a few solo kills in favor of the Xerath, the blue team's bottom lane takes all the plates and the tower in the bottom lane. They then rotate to the top and do the same with the help of the Orn, right before securing the Rift Herald in glorious sacrifice. The gold lead is huge, and thanks to the Orn's pressure on the bottom side now, the blue team is able to smash through mid also. So that's a quick bullet point section of how this lead actually developed, and this is where the first mistakes are made, and I'm sure you will recognize, hey we've gotten all out of towers, everyone's ahead, maybe except one member, in this case the Syndra. How do we lose our lead? How did we throw? Simply put, it's a very bad fight, an overstay definitely. The combination of the Xerath and the Karthus take out the Morgana, and instead of simply retreating, the Caitlyn tries to do too much and also falls. This is quite a common problem with really fed members, especially ADCs. You think you can get out of any situation, but that's not true when the enemy has a Karthus and Xerath. And the raw amount of gold simply from shutdowns here is enough to effectively neutralize the lead, and that's the main thing you have to understand. A gold lead cannot really be a gold lead against teams that have insane scaling potential and that excel at picking off targets who are mispositioned. There's no need to stick around for fights that are lost and give free gold and map pressure to a scaling enemy team, let alone one that obviously has two smurfs. This is always step one into why you lose winnable games. You overstay good plays and you don't back off to get the gold reset. That means going back to base after you take a few towers and get a few picks to go spend the gold you just earned, which in the case of the blue team was quite a lot because of the sheer amount of tower plates and kills they had gotten. From there, it's very easy to go and win the next engagement, shove the second tier towers and carry on snowballing the game. However, a lot of times players will greed for even the slightest bit more and instead cause a huge momentum shift. Ping your team, walk away, buy something pretty and continue smashing. After regrouping, the blue team realizes that sieging mid lane is kind of impossible versus Xerath is wave clear. And the fact that bottom lane is crashing into their tower means Caitlyn's gonna move on down to deal with that bottom wave, Orn moves to deal with the top lane, so effectively you have a 1-3-1, and herein is the other problem. Side lanes exist, you can't just go ARAM, and if the enemy team has wave clear and a lot of burst and perhaps a Karthus ult, you need to show a little bit of restraint and patience while you push out those side waves. You don't want to be caught out like this Morgana, there is no reason to be so far up in a position to be picked off. All mid lane pressure is now gone, you aren't grouped, your Caitlyn has gone back to get an item power spike, but now you can't do anything because you're in a 4v5. So if you're a support player, if you're someone like this Morgana, pay attention to what's going on in the rest of the map and be very careful about your relevant position to the enemy. 
Now seeing as nothing can be done in this situation, the Orn stays top, the Kaiser is so far behind, the Orn is actually able to get a solo kill, and the fact that the Morgana was out of the picture means they can actually pick up a dragon. So the initial shutdown goals, here's a dragon, they got a pick, things are starting to become a little bit tense for the blue team. Now the focus needs to remain on objectives, because Orn had taken off the Kaiser, the wave was crashing into the tower, it really had to rotate, perhaps the Caitlyn could have headed to the top lane, hit a few autos on the top tower to take that off the map. This opens up some more map pressure, you can all go back, wait for the Orn to heal, and then reset for another macro play. However, the Caitlyn goes to the mid lane, the enemy is sitting right there and waiting for them to shove mid lane, she gets caught in a Xerath stun and falls yet again. This is the most fed member, dying to the enemy team's most fed member. You have to realize that the Orn is low and can't help in that situation. The Syndra is tilted, semi-trolling, sitting on the bottom side, just splitting, doing nothing. And you also know the enemy will be waiting to pick you off particularly. A little bit of patience is required even in games where you think you have all control. Moving down through the jungle, getting vision, taking the last out of towers, not sitting in the mid lane to Aram, this should be the priority. A couple of disjointed and brainless plays has given the red team the means to close the lead even without having any towers taken. But nonetheless, all is not lost. This game is still winnable. Unless of course everyone starts walking around like a headless chicken, walking into Xerath, consistently being detached from their team, still pushing for no particular reason. And while your team can't do anything without a certain member in a 5v4, let alone when your Caitlyn and Fed ADC keeps getting picked off herself, it's still vital you set up map control, clear out your jungle camps, ward a little bit, and wait until all five members are ready to push or make some kind of split push play. Don't make the situation worse by adding to the casualties, walking in one by one. It's a very Fred Karthus, it's a very Fred Zareth, you're just going to lose the game. They want to keep picking you off. They want to get a few of you low and let the Karthus ult finish you off. And you're just playing right into their hands at this stage. Yeah, so Caitlyn died and got picked off. Yeah, Morgana died and got picked off. Doesn't mean you now carry on playing the game as if they're still alive. So the issue here is the tilt surrounding Syndra, who is off on side lanes and applying no pressure anywhere. The Orn has wanted to try and get some work done with TP players, but when there's consistently and always one member or more being taken off the map, it's impossible to make set play. And therein is the other problem. In order to stop losing winnable games, you need to swallow your pride, especially if you're the Syndra. You need to build a GA if you're a Caitlyn, a stopwatch would have helped you out in some of these situations. QSS also. You can't do the most damage in the game if you're dead. And if the Xerath is reliably hitting all these spells from darkness, and Karthus is hitting his R's, you never know if he's gonna miss them, and before someone seriously <laughs> writes in the comments, that's a joke. So literally, there's just been no cohesion since that initial mid lane play. One person has always split, one person has always been picked off, and when you keep repeating this, and then eventually three of you are dead at one time, well the enemy team, despite having no other towers, maybe one or two, can shove down the mid lane and try and actually end the game. Now the Orn is showing some stubbornness, but also remember, you can time your back with your teammates respawning, Giving up an inhib and one tower, you get a tower in return, this is okay. But I wouldn't really personally wait too long, but here we have the reverse throw. Once a huge lead slowly chipped away and taken by the blue team's members basically running around like toddlers. Now we have the Orn coming back, the rest of the blue team spawning, ults are used, they can chase down the entire red team and head directly to that Baron. Now I'm sure most of you have seen this before, hey guys we can win, we can shove. You ignore the back timings, you ignore the respawn timings, you get greedy to hit the nexus, you think wow we made such a great comeback, we made them tilt, Xerath hard carried us. Oh, but now you're dead, you're aced, and you lose a Baron. From the red team's perspective, take the inhibitor, fall back to the Baron, you have Kaiser and Karthus that is absolutely free, no one would have intercepted it whatsoever. This now became a winnable game for you, and you just threw it by making the same kind of overstaying mistake that the blue team made. And from the blue team's perspective, giving up some of your base and baiting them into overstaying can lead to a counterplay of huge magnitude. So what we have learned from the situation is that the blue team has finally understood the lesson. For a good 5-6 minutes, no one was picked off after the Baron take. They used it to shove out the supers, to push out the side waves, they took one inhibitor tower, but they didn't greed, they didn't go straight into the enemy base and try and finish with that Baron. They knew this was a stopgap Baron, just wanted to delay and regain control. And they knew that the only way to break through that Xerath is with Baron, and so the final macro play here has to be set up very nicely. And finally the Orn will have his moment to shine with that TB flank. So how you lose winnable games now transfers over to the red team. Orn has maintained his strong tower hitting pressure in the sidelines, if you can believe it, while the rest of the team was just repeatedly caught out. So we skip forward to the second Baron spawn. They've got ward control of the area, they're trying to set a trap. Orn is first pushing that side lane. Blue team doesn't want to start the Baron, that's how people lose winnable games also. They start 
barbarians for things like Karthus and Zareth and Volkaz and Vladimir and then they just get aced in the pit. No point. There's a good deep ward placed, Orn keeps pushing and waits for the right moment to TP as soon as the enemy fully commits to that situation. And you can see even with a quick TP, Morgana's already been dusted by Thanos. Caitlyn has done a good job using a range to his much DPS as possible from the backline. Orn then focuses his ult on the backline of the red team. Despite a cross-eyed Q, he's able to kill the Aurelia, then makes up for the cross-eyed Q by hitting a max range on the Kaiser for the double kill, and then kills the lone bird in the bush for the triple kill TP flank. The Caitlyn kept a range, killed the Karthus, and thanks to the push by Orn on the bottom side, the minions have actually taken that tower, and now they can push to completely open up the base, and this time, not throw the lead. And this is what top laners need to look for as well. This is what teams need to understand how it's trying to work. And it took a good 20 minutes, but they're able to finally pull off the play they needed to in order to win the game. The waffling around in the mid game, refusal to group, the arrogance to fight, the fed members on the enemy team, the inability to have a proper teamfight engage when you have the lead because someone is always being picked off. These are all things that cost you winnable games. And if you make a comeback like the Karthus' team did, don't get too excited to finish. You have control, you can lazily fall back to Baron before pushing to end in the next rotation. And yes, we can translate this to the second game because we have to talk about that thing making a play. Sometimes the game is looking lost, sometimes you've thrown a lead, maybe you have a lead, and someone makes a play. These are all things we have to deal with. So to quickly illustrate an example of this, look at the gold lead swings in this particular game. In this one, it's actually me and I'm Warwick, and despite a hugely good early game for us, camping top lane, supporting the winning lanes, I didn't really have to do too much outside of securing heralds and dragons, the enemy Silas and Twitch and their whole team were much more cool coordinated in their macro. They reacted to events on the map, the Lux mid lane had enough wave clear to make it very difficult, the Azir tried to split push and got tilted much like the previous Syndra and just kept getting picked off. This made it very difficult to siege and to push any lead and eventually that lead became a huge deficit. But because people were being picked off but the rest of us didn't follow one at a time, they weren't able to really break open the base unlike the first game. All of this eventually leads the red team to start up the Baron, fortunately we had a little bit of a vision control so we knew what was going on. And now essentially it comes down to making a play. You have to recognize the make or break moment in a game. If we give up this Baron, they're gonna shove, they're gonna get inhibs, and basically we're gonna bleed slowly and eventually just lose. So the on top hits a beautiful ultimate, and games are often lost in this exact moment. Play is made by your team member, and you didn't do anything. No, you just watch. You think, wow, that's a great ultimate, but it's kind of far away. I'm kind of scared to go and get that thinking out of your mind. Kill it if you have to. Make a play off of his play. Flash ult the Twitch to get rid of him. And now it's a down to a 50-50 smite. So while Silas is too scared for this moment and tries to ult me and ends up ulting someone else, you can simply secure that Baron yourself. You got Barons, you got kills, you got shutdowns, you got chase downs. The gold swings back in your favor. You can see the graph on screen now in a drastic way. All of that losing, all of that patience because you didn't throw too much because you just held on as much as possible until that moment you could make a play, you know, have the lead, make pick some people that are out of position, use that numbers advantage to shove it down mid in the most non-innuendo way possible, and enjoy your sweet, sweet LP. So hopefully these two games, just this discussion, a bit more open-ended discussion, can show you some of the decisions that you can make or not make that ends up costing you leads and even if you make a comeback and end up reverse throwing, you don't want to be in that situation. Be disciplined, play with your head. When a play presents itself, don't be afraid to just go for it and make it. If you need more details on macro, I have made a video on that. That'll be in the top right. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, share and comment if you did learn something and enjoy it. I wish you the best of luck in winning your winnable games instead of losing them. Consider subscribing for more League of Legends and Jungle videos just like this one. And as always, I will see you all in the next tutorial.